Hello everyone, my name is Sana Siddiqui and I'm a transitional year resident at Wayne State University. I would like to present our QI project on the rates of catheter-associated urinary tract infections at Ascension Providence Rochester Hospital in Rochester Hills. Catheter-associated urinary tract infections are one of the most common healthcare-acquired infections and complications arising from them can contribute to prolonged hospital stay and patient mortality. A catheter-associated urinary tract infection, or COTI, is a UTI resulting from an indwelling catheter that has been in place for at least two consecutive days at an inpatient location. Importantly, a urinary catheter needs to be in place at the date of the event or the day before to fall under this definition. My colleagues and I identified eight events of catheter-associated urinary tract infections at our hospital from April through November 2022. As mentioned earlier, this was concerning to us due to the associated increase in patient morbidity and mortality. Additionally, COTIs also incur substantial costs to the system with an average increase of $750 in costs per hospitalization. This equates to over $340 million in additional healthcare costs. We aim to reduce the rates of COTI at our hospital by at least 50% over a six-month time period. To do so, we brought together physicians and nurses to work collaboratively to reduce COTIs. We decided to monitor the incidence of COTI hospital-wide on a monthly basis to evaluate our progress. We conducted a root cause analysis of COTI at our hospital. The indications for which our patients were most likely to be catheterized included acute urinary retention, post-operative status, strict monitoring of ins and outs, palliative care, immobilization, and sacral or perineal ulcers. Once an indication has been identified, a nurse will usually page a resident to place an order. Following the placement of the order, there can be some confusion about who will be managing the catheter, including when will the foley be removed, who will remove it, who will monitor for symptoms of UTI. These can all contribute to the development of the COTI event. Our team developed a protocol to follow for cases of possible catheterization. After receiving a call from nursing, we would evaluate the patient's urinary volume. If the volume was less than 300 ml, we would simply continue to monitor the patient. However, should the patient have more than 300 ml in urinary volume, we would ask a series of questions, such as whether the patient has had a Foley before, if he or she has had symptoms of urinary issues in the past, or if the patient had tried voiding recently. We would then work to solve any underlying issues causing dysuria, urgency, and hematuria. If the patient had tried voiding, we would conduct a post-void residual bladder scan to determine next steps. If the post-void residual volume on the bladder scan was found to be less than 300 ml and the patient had symptoms of urinary retention, we would consider a one-time straight catheterization. If the patient had no symptoms, we would simply monitor the patient with a trial of void and PVR measurement. Should the bladder scan show a PVR of 300 ml or greater, we would at first initially monitor the patient for 1 to 2 hours and then repeat a PVR. Should the repeated PVR show persistent retention, we would do a straight catheterization. After one round of this, we would again monitor the patient's PVR and should there be a persistent elevation of the post-void residual volume greater than 300 ml, we would place a Foley after discussion with the advice of our attending physician. Once the Foley is in place, we would ensure accurate documentation with the date of the placement of the Foley, alternative trials prior to the Foley, indications for the Foley catheter, and any barriers the patient might have to urinating independently. We would then identify and remove catheters that are no longer needed. For our PDSA cycle, we plan to decrease the incidences of COTI by at least 50% over a six-month period. We did this by re-educating our staff on Foley catheter protocol for urinary retention and by creation of an order set in Cerner for this purpose. We then collected feedback from our staff on the process and measured the change at the end of each month. Our goal now is to improve the protocol based on feedback and outcomes. 
This slide is a recap of all the catheter-associated urinary tract infections in our hospital for the last two years. For a 12-month period from January 2021 through December 2021, there were 16 caught e cases. For another 12-month period following that from January 2022 through November 2022, there were an overall 9 cases. If we compare the 6-month period from April 2022 through November 2022, we find that there were 8 caught e cases. However, in December 2022 through March 2023, we have had zero caught e cases at our hospital. In conclusion, we found that acute urinary retention was the most common reason for Foley placement at our hospital. In order to reduce the incidences of catheter-associated urinary tract infections, we reviewed and re-implemented a protocol for urinary retention, as well as created an order set at Cerner. We found that over the three-month period from December through March 2023, we have successfully reduced the incidences of cauties at our hospital and currently are at zero incidences. This concludes our presentation. Thank you so much for your time, and we'll take any questions now.